two seconds. And I'm back. I am concerned that I'm recording from my phone. Okay, fantastic. Let's get going. So today, um, this is being recorded, just so you know. Today, I would like to start off by um, acknowledging a very special person. Um, all righty, too easy. Head back to this one. I'd like to acknowledge that uh, Sir Ken Robinson, who um, was an amazing educator and um, person who inspired so many of us with creativity, has passed away quietly. And um, I think we should be showing our respect to Ken for all he did for us. I just want to double check that you guys are seeing my screen. If somebody could just, oh yes, oh no, you're seeing the other one. I see what's happened. Hold on just a minute, please everyone. I will be back. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to try to share my screen correctly this time. This one, there we go, that's better, yes. So um, I would like to acknowledge he has inspired me many, many times over the years and I've been lucky to see him um, live and just an amazing educator and I think we can all take some, um, some of his thinking and apply it to where we work every day. So today we're going to be working uh, through looking at how we can create interactive videos. We're using Office and Stream, um, Office Stream and Microsoft Quizzes. I have created um, a collection of links on a Wakelet. So if you just copy down Bitly, Interactive Videos 2208, I hope that's today's date. If you just write that down, you'll be able to access um, the links and information that I'm sharing. Um, and that, that will stay live for many times in the future. That will stay live forever. So it will be there for you. Um, so this uh, actual link, when you get to it, looks a little bit like this. And you'll see that there's lots of little how-tos and, and things along the way. Some of these, yeah, most of them should open for you. Yes, they're all outside our New South Wales Department of Education firewall, so they should be good to go. So what we're going to actually do, uh, it's pretty obvious, we are going to be looking at Office 365 and looking at Stream, Office Stream, which is this little, this little icon here, and Office Forms. So just um, for a second, I'm going to stop sharing and just ask what your experiences are with um, with, yes, I will copy that into the chat straight away. Um, if you could share your experiences, what have you done with Stream and what have you done with um, uh, Forms in the past? Um, that should, that should um, give me a little bit of an idea. Have you, thumbs up if you, is, uh, hands up if you've used Stream before would be great. Hands up, just click on the little hands up icon. Fantastic, Yasuhiko has, and Academic Manager has, fantastic. And Tony is just typing for a second. And hands up if you have used uh, stream, uh, stream before. Yep, Yasuhiko has, fantastic. All right, well, let's have a bit of a look at that then, and we can work with that. Forms, yes, fantastic. Okay, Antonia. We are going to be starting with, as I walk through, we're going to be starting with looking at our stream and how we can record videos and upload into that space. Um, and then we will head into our forms afterwards. But first I need to show you an example of what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to head into, this is my stream. To get to stream, we're in our Office 365 area. You should have a stream icon. Um, you, if it's not uh, visible, open up all the apps and you will see that Stream is available for you. Now, Stream, I always say to teachers, it's like YouTube, but nice and safe. 
So it's sitting inside, um, generally inside your Office 365 firewall and login area. So what you're seeing at the moment is a New South Wales Department of Education login. We have about 3 million students and 100,000 teachers in our tenant. And I am going to pop into my content, pop into my videos, and I'm going to open up here um, this be a zookeeper video that I've previously created. So this video is one that um, there will be no audio. I'm not allowing the audio for the system with this, so don't stress. Um, so this is one video that I got from elsewhere. And you'll see if you have a look along the timeline here, we might just quickly whiz up to about here and press play. I'll keep talking because the audio is not showing. And if we just wait a second, and you'll see that there's a dot here. And my interactive video should be playing. So if I click on the interactivity here, you'll see that a, a form pops up for students to answer. So my name, this is not, I've, uh, you have to, I'll show you why, but if you want students' names to be collected, you do actually have to add them to this form. And what is this about? It's about being a zookeeper. Um, what is typical for this day? And the questions. So when I choose submit, this is a self-marking quiz. So two seconds and it should come through. It's a self-marking quiz and it will tell me how many questions. There we go. So I can view my results and I can see that I got this question incorrect. And I can, as a person, put, uh, the creator, put some more information around what was wrong and what was right. And this one was correct. So now I go back to the video. And I can watch. And there is another form here, which is a part two video, and I can answer the questions. So they're not related to the video, they're just in there. So you can have, as you can see from this here, let me just continue. You can create a form that as it arrives at that dot point, the form will open or the students can click and they can complete the questions. That information then goes into, if I just pop it, yep, this is the Zookeeper Part 1 form that I had, and I get the information straight away. So for formative assessment, this is a fantastic way for me to see um, how the students are going and how the video was. So first up, that's what we're heading towards today. So the first thing we're going to do now is just creating videos, some different ways we can create videos. Now, I'm not sure. I'm just going to quickly come back and uh, I might get you to put your hand up. That's probably going to be the easiest way for me. And let me know, have you ever created, uh, recorded a video using PowerPoint recording? I might just get you to put your hand up if you have recorded a video using PowerPoint recording. And we might, might have a little look here. Actually, back to my participants. Um, Antonia has and the others haven't. Okay, let me show you how to do that. So in PowerPoint, there is a fantastic little add-in or uh, a tab that you can enable. And this allows you to do some great recording. So to enable that, you need to pop into um, your options area, wait for the options to pop up, click on customize ribbon, scroll down on the right hand side, and you'll see that you've got a recording box there. Make sure this is ticked. So ticket is usually all you have to do. And then when you return to uh, the regular interface, you'll see that there's a recording tab. And this allows you to do some really cool stuff. So the first thing that we can do is record a slideshow. 
This may or may not work because I'm sharing my screen at the moment. So when we record a slideshow, yep, it will work through um, a recording, uh, a recording a PowerPoint. And if I have my pen and I want to write on top of things, so I can be annotating information or deleting, I can change my pen color, I can do whatever I like. And I can keep moving through the presentation as needs be and explain to students what I'm doing. And then when I stop, oh, I didn't start record yet. There we go. Silly me. <laughs> OK, so now I'm recording properly and I can be moving through my presentation deck, um, doing all my recordings, doing what I need to do. Just remember, I started that on slide five. Um, doing my annotation, explaining to students a concept. And then when I stop, I can replay each slide to see how I'm going, but I'm going to escape back to my PowerPoint just by cl clicking the X. And now each of those videos that I did some recording on has an audio in it. So I can export to video and it will save as a um, MP4 and pop it onto, let's pop this onto my desktop so I can find it later. And that video is there for me. Uh, that is just for if you're just recording a PowerPoint. If you want to record your screen, like anything that you're showing on your computer, then you can choose this screen recording. Just going to slide this back to the beginning for a second and I'm going to choose screen recording and it says which part of your screen do you want to record? So I'm just clicking and dragging the cursor to be over the whole screen and I'm, and I'm going to choose record. Same deal, three second countdown and it starts, it's recording my screen. So as I go through things, as I change my screens, it will be recording that. And then when I'm ready, I just very quickly choose the stop recording at the top. And it will place that recording on top of a PowerPoint slide. That's all good. If I would have thought about this properly, I would have put a blank slide in there and started my video on that slide, but I didn't. But that's OK, because to save this video, I now right click on the video and choose save media as. The option, it says media file, don't stress. This will be a uh, MP4 and I choose save. And then if you save the PowerPoint, the video will save on top of it. I'm just gonna delete it so I don't muck up my PowerPoint. So now if I go back to my desktop, you'll see that I have the screen recording from Microsoft Stream. Oh, sorry. Screen recording, that's a different. Ah. Excuse me a second. Two seconds. Thank you. Very good. Um, so the video that I recorded is here. It's still recording, it's still rendering at the moment. That will play in a minute. Uh, and the other one will be here as well. So that's how you can very quickly, I know I did said that very quickly, but that's how you can. Just make sure you pop in, choose a recording. Now there is a how-to for this in the link that I shared. Um, my, one of Mike Tolson's videos uh, walks through this beautifully, but you need to create your video beforehand, right? Or download it from wherever you are. You then will pop into stream. So we want to pop it up into stream now. So I pop into create and I choose upload video. I just navigate, choose browse, whatever you want to do. I think I'm an old school person when it comes to this and I do accidentally choose, I do tend to click rather than drag. Um, so this is uh, just so people know what I'm doing. It's uploading for me to stream. Anyone who's uploaded to YouTube will understand what this is all about. Um, it will process. I'm going to press publish 
and it's going to send me an email when that's ready to go. I'm just going to save it for a second and come back to it in a minute. So that is, uh, how many ways is that? Record your slideshow, record a screen recording, upload to stream. And then another thing that we can do is record directly from stream. So anyone who's used screen, uh, Screencastify, which records from inside your browser, would be familiar with this. So stream now has this functionality under the create button to choose record screen. So when I click on record screen, it comes up to let you know, you know, do the right thing. Yep, okay, I'll do the right thing. You can choose what camera you would like to use, your front camera or your rear camera, uh, camera off for some reason, and which audio. So those are 100% correct for me. It's going to record my whole screen as well as a little uh, selfie of me. Um, eh, all right then. No, I might turn it off. And you'll see that the little picture here disappears or on. So sometimes students like to see our video, our photos. Uh, I would think that around about 15 year olds might not. Um, but anyway, your choice. You can turn it on or off. Uh, we might leave it on. No. We'll turn it off and press record. Uh, it is not available at the moment for me because I am recording and sharing my screen. So what I have done so that I can walk you through this process is we'll just have a little bit of a look at this video. And I'll just be quiet so you can watch these. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? something that I wasn't planning on doing. I'm just going to quickly stop sharing my screen and I'm going to reshare it now and I'm going to choose sys include system audio. So now you'll be able to hear Mike's video. So I'll be quiet until the end of this. It's just a short video. So I'm on the stream homepage here. You go to stream.microsoft.com and I'm going to click create and there's this new record screen option, and I'll just click this. So this gives me a little screen recording dialog, letting me know to capture my screen. I can change my camera controls here or my microphone controls here, but I'll just leave them at the defaults and click record. So I get a little video down here in the lower right, hey, and I can change my entire screen to record, or I just choose an application window, or I can choose an edge tab. So I've got a couple tabs open, but I'll just choose my entire screen and click share. So I get a countdown, three, two, one. Now, if I don't want my video over here, I can make that go away. I don't wanna see myself while I'm recording, so I'm just gonna turn that off. And yeah, a little bar down here to show or hide or stop sharing. Now, because it's recording my screen, I'm gonna go and do something. So I'm gonna open up OneNote. Maybe I'm gonna do a demo in OneNote. I'm gonna draw some rainbow ink, things like that. Okay, now my video is done. I'll go back to that original tab where the little red dot is recording and I'll click next. So now I can just review my recording really easy. And I'm going to say record again. If I didn't like it, I'm going to watch the recording here. Now, if I don't want my video over here, I can make that go away. There we go. My whole video is ready to go and I click upload to stream right here. Now there are some options. I'll give it demo recording. I'll give it a name. And I can have a description, what language is it in, because then I can actually get a caption. And maybe I want everyone in this company or school to see this, or maybe I'm going to uncheck that for now. And I'll just say publish, but not everyone can see it yet. So I'll hit publish, and it's uploading my videos, and it's almost done. So I'm going to go to the video now. Now here we are. Here's my video. It's uploaded into stream. It's under my content, so it shows up under videos that I've created. And I can do all the other things in stream like publish this and get analytics on it. Closed captions are built in. All the other goodness of stream right there, but private and safe and secure. I'll be demoing the brand new. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of that now. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So um, 
that was I decided the best way I could show you how to do that. So recording your screen, this is so handy because if you're on a um, sort of like a Chromebook, you can use this. If you don't have a lot of memory on your computer, uh, you can use that instead of saving the files and it goes directly. So it never actually downloads onto your computer. It's always there, um, always um it's just record straight and uploads it straight. You don't do a lot of editing with that, of course, afterwards, but it is there for you to use. So um, what do we do from that? Um, so your video is now up in stream and we need to go and make the interactive component. I'm just going to stop for a second and see if there's any questions. Um, your personal Outlook account um, this one is done on the official, I think, stream. Let me just see if I can quickly pop into, I'll open another browser while I'm talking. If you just pop into your office um, sign-in area, if the stream functionality is there for you, it should work for you. So um, just have a quick check. I've never actually used my personal one for this, just use my official one. Um, are there any other questions uh, to um, to ask at this stage? Is that uh, are there some public streams that we can use and add forms for the students for assessment? Uh, so for me, I always I use it within the department that the students. So within the New South Wales Education. I upload the video into that tenant and then make the forms within that space. So if it is Outlook and it is public, that may be a may be a a, a, a problem for you. Um, I'm assuming though, given your name, that you might have a department based stream that you can use. Um, so I'm hoping that that's going to work for you. All right, so let's head into forms then and create our form. I know a few of you have had experience with forms, so I will go in and share some different information um, from that. So let me just head into Office Forms. I use forms a lot. I'm looking forward to getting some um, folders to organize my forms. So today we're going to head in and create a new form. A new quiz. Yep, we're going to create a quiz. I'm going to give it a title, and this one is going to be Mike's Forms. That's what we're going to do it. Mike's video. Fantastic. And we can start adding questions. If you want to add an image to the top, then you can do, and I always uh, recommend that teachers use this uh, search functionality because it gives us good copyright images. I am going to put in here, uh, off a stream and see what comes up. Thank you, and pop this into my form. And I'm going to add some new questions. So I've got a few options of the types of questions that I'm going to add here. And I think this one I'm going to add will be a text. And the reason I'm going to add a text to this is because I have a question, just pretend this is work that I want students to do. And I'm going to do a quick little screenshot of this question here because I want students to create the, um, oh, that's the answer key. I don't want the answer key to work. No, I want the real, there we go. Oh, this is what I want. I want students to correct, to type this up correctly for me. So I'm going to save that as a, quickly saving this question, question. Demo Q1, save, pop down into my form, and I want to upload that question that I just created. Here we go. Because I'm a little bit short on time. Please 
write the correct sentence in the space below. Fantastic. And the question, they will write their answer in here. Uh, yep, that's good. And I can add in here the correct answer for the students. If there are points for this, so yes, this is a four point question. Yes, it's a long answer. And yes, it's required. Add that question. So next, we're going to add another question. And you can see that actually this one is about Mike. Let's make this about Mike's video. It's going to be a multiple choice. And let's say the question is, can you turn the front camera off when using stream screen recording? And the answer is yes and no. And now I want to say which is the correct answer. So the correct answer is yes. And one thing I like to give with students if they um, if they answer incorrectly is a little bit of a hint or an explanation why the camera can be turned on and off by clicking on the um, option in the thumbnail. There we go. And that's worth four points. Next, we're going to add another question. This one is going to be a rating. And how well did Mike explain how to use stream screen recording? And they can choose, I think I might actually change it to a number and between one and five. And this one would be just worth one point, if any points at all. Is it required? Yes, it's required. So you can see I'm building my form here. I can then create a theme, which will then be the color that appears. So I'm just going to choose this red because stream is a little bit about reds. And now an important thing that you need to do is make this choice. Anyone with the link can respond. So it has to be a public form. Now, one thing I haven't done on here that I told you you should do is add your name, student's name. If you do want to collect names for this surname, and I'm going to pop that up to the top. Add new first name. Might even need to add your class. And you might do something like, oh, whoops, that was a wrong option. Let's do it as a multiple choice. And year group, just so you might know your students. Year seven, if you want to filter your responses later on. So everything you want. To filter, make sure you create a question for. So my form, I think, is pretty good to go. I just need to put this year group question up the top. Actually, yep. Yeah. Yep, that works for me. So I have the question and I have the answers for students to do. So my form's ready to go. I can, if I want, just send this form out to students or put it in a Teams as an assignment and then they watch the video. But it's really nice if students can actually answer the video as they go along. Anyone who's used Nearpod or Pear Deck or Edpuzzle would be aware of these sorts of things you can do. So I'm going to open up that video that I recorded. Time to bring it all back together now. I'm going to open up this video. I'll be demoing the Just choose, choose this. Choose the interactivity option. Now, the transcript, I think, is fantastic in um, stream. Just a little aside, it's worth reading through. And if there are any mistakes, just click on the little edit transcript button and you can go in and change. So this one demoing. That uh, would be demoing and press save. 
So this is really important, I think, that we go ahead and do that. Yeah, so he got this is, um, I think you can change languages for this if necessary. Um, I'm not too sure how that works for the Japanese component. Uh, apologies for that. So now I'm going to add form. And it's going to say, what's your form URL? So I'm going to head back to my form over here. <gasps> Wrong one. That's the one. I'm going to copy the link. Head back to my screen. Paste the URL in here. And this is um, how well did you understand? Okay. For example, now whereabouts on the timeline do you want this video to appear? So I think I want it to appear. Just pull your little circle thing along to where you want the, the questions to be and choose add to timeline. So now as I go through, let's just pop the little video about here, the little dot. And the video pops up. Now you'll notice, um, yeah, so, and I can answer it directly. So I can type in here, type in here. I'm in year nine. I can type my answer in here. I can answer no, put a four, choose submit. It's just submitting that response to the back end of forms. Here we go. And if I go back into the form, the response is already there for me. So if you're, uh, oh, if you're setting this as flipped learning for homework or for some sort of self-directed learning when you're not around, but you want to know when the students have completed the form, then you can pop into the settings of the form and send an email notification of each response. So now I'm going to get an email every time someone completes this video and the quiz on the video. So I think this is a really great thing to do if you're doing remote learning or learning during the COVID period and you need students to um, respond to work, but you're not actually, it's an asynchronous learning activity rather than a synchronous learning activity. Once again, three dots, settings, and then click the get an email notification of each response. So within stream, Once again, what did I do? I chose to add a form. I pasted the URL of the form. Uh, just say I went back to some of my other forms. I can even post. Da -li -da 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 -da. Where's one here? <sighs> Let's pop this one. Uh, share. Anyone with a link? Copy. Head back into stream, pop the URL. This has actually got nothing to do with the form, but uh, here. I would like this to appear right at the end of the video. So I'm choosing add to timeline. So you'll see now that there are two video, two question forms for this video. And as such, there are two dots on my video. So can you see how that one, it didn't stop at that first video? 
we press play. So you'll see a little poppy thing popped up here, a poppy thing. Sorry, it's Sunday morning in Australia. So how well a, a little pop up appears but the form does it, the video doesn't stop for the form. So you will have to tell your students to answer the question. So click on that and the video will pop up. And then continue the video. But then it will show for the second, uh, second dot. So basically with these dots, the first one, it won't stop, but the second one it will. So you will have to tell your students, if there's a dot, please click to open the form. Some students may jump straight to the end, which is my experience during remote learning, um, but that's okay. It's all about you and the types of questions that you're asking your students to check for understanding and for formative assessment purposes. So I'm just going to stop sharing my quiz, my screen for a minute and come back to the room and see you've used it in Japanese. Fantastic. A recording of the presentation um, Sidu, will be shared via the um, Microsoft. Uh, there is a playlist in YouTube. So this session is called, these ones are called Microsoft, aren't they? Uh, Microsoft playlist. If you ping me on Twitter under Pip Cleaves, I will get that link to you as soon as um, it's available. It may take a week or so, um, but, but, um, that will just take a little while to get to you. Now, um, Christina has also joined us since we're um, since I started. So, welcome, Christina. So, uh, questions here. Can we get a recording of the presentation? Yes. Can you share what you did just now to take a snapshot? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, I'll pop back in and do that now. So, in if um, you'll notice down the bottom here that I have a little snipping pair of scissors. If I go into my search area and I type snipping tool, there is a default snipping tool for all Windows 10. It's changing to a functionality called snip and sketch. So you can either look for snipping tool or snip and sketch. And this, oh, I haven't shared my screen. Do, 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 do. Let me share my screen. Can you tell it's Sunday morning? And I'm just really not with it yet. Okay, so I have, I'll do that again for you. Starting from scratch, close that down. Pop to here. And I chose, it's called Snip and Sketch or Snipping Tool. Either of those will work. So Snip and Sketch, which is the newer version. And then it says, what do you want to skip and snatch? sketch? And choose New. And I'm going to choose the whole of my screen. That's going to be really confusing for you. So let me get rid of this one in the background. Thank you. All right, fine. New. And choose the bit that you want to snip. So this bit here. There it is. And choose either copy or save. So if you copy, you can then pop directly into a Word document. Control V and put your snipping in there. If you want to save it, choose save. It's saving as a JPEG. Sometimes I save as a PNG. Actually, mostly I save as a PNG and give it a name. And that saves for you. You can as well, if you have your pen handy, you can annotate over. So if you want to do a quick how-to for people, you know, click here. And then when you save, my 
directory. If I pop back to my desktop and open demo three, it's got the the um, annotation over the top of it. Once again, that's called the screen and snip tool um, or snip. If you look up snipping tool is what it used to be, but it's now called snip and sketch. You can also one of the cool things of this is see here snip in three seconds or snip in 10 seconds. So just say you want to prepare something or you need to quickly do something. So I've got three seconds to get back to. Yes, I want to snip that and snip the whole thing. And there we have my whole screen snipped for me. We can do things like put the ruler on this. Just go to the big screen and grab my pen and thank you. I can rule along the line, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. So say you're doing stuff with maps or some, some mathematical work, you can do that as well. It's also a protractor. So this used to be hiding down in the bottom right hand corner of, um, of Windows 10, but they've now incorporated it within um, the tool. Okay, so that's an aside. I'm just gonna close those um, for that. All right, heading back to ask questions now. It is very cool. Okay, someone else has got a question here. So, oh good, it works in Japanese. Public, are there some public streams that we can use and add forms for the student's assessment? Yeah, um, no, is the short answer to that. So you will need to um, find your own videos online somewhere. Not sure where you might find those. And um, it would be sort of, I guess, Look, I just uploaded this one of Mike's. I'm going to delete it afterwards because I do feel uncomfortable doing that. But some people, I guess, might upload videos from elsewhere into the stream environment. One of the things I do like about stream, though, it is it is safe for students. Um, YouTube is blocked inside our Department of Education for students from the age of 5 to 16. Um, so we have a problem showing videos to our teacher, uh, to our students. So stream is our answer to that. And we use it a lot for our own professional learning. So it might be up to you uh, to create some videos and use snippets of other videos and things like that to be able to create your own content for students. And just head back and see if there are any other questions here. Um, my Twitter handle is, that's an easy one to answer. Pip Cleaves uh, should find me. Um, age appropriate themes. Ah, themes in thorns. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so I'm a high school teacher. So I will, um, I very much understand this. Just going to share my screen again. And I am going to head into forms. And just say I wanted to put a really cool, let me tell you where I get all my themes and stuff from. So I am a great lover of a site called Unsplash. So Unsplash is Creative Commons usable theme, uh, photos that you don't need to give um, a, appropriate accreditate, um, appropriate, um, what do you call it? Lost my word. Uh, referring back to that person, reference. You, I mean, it's always nice to, but you don't have to with this one. So just say I am, it's summertime and I live in Australia. Well, it's obvious for me that I might like to use a beach theme for one of my forms. So I'm going to download this beach form, this beach video, and all I need to do is just click on, I'd even use this one here actually, download the video it's going to pop it directly into wherever your downloads go for so for me that's my downloads i'm going to pop into the theme let me just change forms because that's a really important one so it's going to head back to this theme here and i'm going to click on the plus 
and it says, do you want to add an image or do you just want to choose a color? I'm going to add an image. I'm going to choose upload. I'm going to head into my downloads and I'm going to use this image here. Now, sometimes you have to be a little bit patient. There we go. So my background color is there and I want to choose an appropriate color. I don't like that gray. I'm not so good with hex numbers. So just for a second, I'm going to head out to Adobe Color, which is sort of like my default color space where I go to find color stuff. So, yep, thanks very much. I just want to find a hex for a blue color. Oh, blues. There we go. Not really what I'm looking for. Yeah, okay. I want this blue. So I'm going to copy that hex color. 829FD9. 829FD9. And that doesn't match at all, but you can see what I'm doing here. Um, I'm changing a color to what I like. And then um, that will stick. So you'll when you head back into uh, Unsplash as well, things like, you know, if it is a teenager's, then some of the stuff that might work for, you know, depending on the theme of what you're doing, you can find a good gaming stuff. If it was my Japanese classroom, I would head in and find some images for Japan. So you can see there are lots of options for you to use um, in this. Now, if Unsplash for some reason is unavailable to you, Pexels um, is very similar to Unsplash. We have in our Department of Education, Unsplash is pretty much okay for 12 year olds and up. We haven't found too many illegal things on it. Um, but for theming for you, it's fine. It doesn't matter if the students can get to it or not because you've downloaded and uploaded the image. Just stop sharing for a second and see if that works for you. Um, I'm from Sydney in Australia. Oh, not Sydney. I'm from a town called Newcastle, which is about two hours north of Sydney on the east coast of Australia. So it's currently about 10 to 11 on Sunday morning here. Okay, any other questions? Let me just quickly go through. Oh, forms, some more fun stuff to let you know. Okay, all right. Forms you seem to be liking. Now there's a new functionality to forms, which I just adore, and that is file upload. Ah, you have to, let me just, you won't be able to use this for your stream video, but you will be able to use it for regular forms where students have, can upload a file. So say, for example, let's take a maths classroom. You've got a whole heap of um, questions where you've done screenshots of maths questions and uploaded with multiple choice for students to answer. And at the end, you give them a very hard question that they go and write on their books on paper and pen. And then they take a photo and they upload that photo for you to use in their form. So uh, upload a photo of working for this question, uh, for this question below. All right, so just pretend I'm a maths teacher. I know that's a hard push because I'm really not a maths teacher. Anyone who knows me knows that well. I'm gonna quickly jump and do a new screenshot here. Yep, happy with that. I am going to save it. This one's going to be demo four. Head back to my form. And I'm going to add this image here. Excuse me, sorry. Yes. Can you please share the screen? Oh, no. Did I all do that without? I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize. I apologize. I'll do it from scratch again. Okay. So one of the things we can do, let me just delete that in forms, is add and upload. 
So one of the options here is a file upload. So just as I mentioned before, imagine it's a maths type quiz or something where you've got some low level questions for students to do. And then you add at the end something where you want them to go and find some evidence or write something down and take a photo. Please upload, oops, uh, upload your worked answer to the question. Here, um, to the left, to the right. I think that's where it's going to put it. And it choose the question. The question is sitting. I'm just going to do a quick screen snip. So using my screen snipping tool, I'm going to pop in and do a screen snip. I'm going to save that as demo, I think I'm up to five. So now I'm going to head back to my form and I'm going to click on the little insert media, choose image, and upload it. And it's on my desktop, it's demo five. So while that's just uploading, there we go. It's actually below, so I might change that question below. Students would go off and do the work. You can limit the file size up to you. How many points are going to be allocated for this? Well, it's quite a big one, so I'm going to give it 10. Yes, it's required. So now if I just so you can see what happens for students, they do the question, they upload their file, and it goes to their computer for them to find the video. If they're on their phone, same deal, there'll be an upload functionality for tablets or mobile devices. Just heading back. So that's a really good option. One thing you might have noticed as well, when I, let's just make this one a text. There is an option here when I choose insert media to insert a video. So you can put a YouTube link let me just quickly find a YouTube link. Pop back to ah oh, my brain. Pop the YouTube link in there. And the video will play. And I would say, um, uh, da, 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 da. what are my suggestions for dot, 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 dot. So for you who wanted to create questions around some publicly available um, available content, uh, Monique, I think it was, um, this might be your answer. You could put, okay, so that is now there. So let's see what happens for students. Oh, I need to add some answers. Oh, yeah, it's a long term. That'll work. Go to the preview, scroll down, and there's that video for students to play. Now, one thing you could do is at the beginning of your form, right at the top, where it says to – we're changing this option here, by the way. Thank you. Add media. Hmm. The option wasn't there for that. Oh, well. The first question could be the option – to add the video. So for this one, choose video, head into YouTube and grab video. Head back to the form, pop the video in there and you have uh, the video ready to go. So please watch this video and answer all the questions below. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fix it. Sorry, I'm doing this on the fly. So please respond. Um, please note that I'm just making this up as I go. Um, you're going to type a question in here for students to do, but maybe up the top in this area, please give your instructions. Watch the video in question one and answer all follow based. 
Yeah, something like that would help students to know that you've got that happening and you ask your questions ready to go. So I think that um, is pretty much a good summary of how you can upload into stream, make your own videos, create your own record screen recordings, pop them into stream and attach uh, forms to those videos for students to answer. Again, for these, make your forms in, in forms and then bring it across and add it in the, in the interactivity component. Um, you can also create your own forms with videos inside forms to make them interactive. For this one, don't forget, I would always recommend, especially if it's asynchronous learning, to head into the settings, scroll down to the bottom, and get email notification for each response. You can also, of course, once these are ready, I'm just going to get the share button. This will be the last thing I share. Grab my link, head out into one of my teams, and I can add this as an assignment, or I can add it as a link in my team um, is and put the date for students to do. You can pop that there and students can watch the video from inside teams. Yeah, that's right. And you will see that the video is here to be watched. I can also set it as an assignment in a team for students uh, to record as well. So I think I could probably go on for hours about this stuff, but I think that's some options for you um, that you can use. I hope, uh, sorry for not sharing just then, I hope that is an option for you and um, has given you some ideas of how you can uh, easily add interactive. Videos aren't just videos anymore. Uh, especially in a remote learning situation, we need to understand our students' um, understanding and to, to know when we can move forward with learning. So thank you very much for spending some time with me. Um, I hope that you've got something new that you can use in the future. And, of course, um, I was going to share something on Twitter. Remind me, what was I going to share? Oh, the playlist for uh, the Microsoft for these sessions. So I will do that for sure. I will do that for sure. So have a great day, everyone. I will um, now end the session and I will catch up with you all later. So bye everyone, take care.